Right, welcome to Tactics, a showcase video it's for Space Wolves and for one of the new units that I've painted up, uh, Bjorn the Fell Handed, uh, is the plastic model now that comes, one of the uh, combinations or configurations that you can go for uh, from the Space Wolves Dreadnought uh, kit. So, uh, in this video, it'll be a showcase video, so I'm going to zoom in, take a look at the model. Here he is, painted up, just here. Very happy with how he's come out. And then uh, we'll also look at the tactics uh, for him, upgrades and so on, uh, options to take uh, for beyond the, uh, the fell handed, how to use them in games and try and get the most out of this unit. But we'll zoom in here first of all, take a look at the model and sort of show you a bit of conversion works taking place on here. Um, so I'll explain that as we take a look. Right, so there he is, really happy with how he's come out. Uh, most of my army for the Space Wars has been painted on commission by Siege Studios, uh, but I've painted this one myself here, just trying to match in what's already been painted for the rest of the army. Just using my urban basing tutorial uh, there for the base, just copying the same as you see in that video, and then uh, happy with how this model's been painted up. I hope to do future painting tutorials for the Space Wolves uh, later on, just to show you how I've painted this one up just here. So I'm happy with how the claws come out. That's quite, quite looking quite good. And the basing and so on. It's an amazing plastic kit, this whole ornate. You just sort of build uh, the Beyond the Fair Handed option and it, you get all this ornate gold work here on the front. Looks absolutely superb. So for the Laz, the twin Laz cannon, you don't get that in the kit. You get the other options that you can take from the codex, but not the twin Laz cannon. So um, you remember how I've done this here, this is, this is made up uh, of the, the arm that you get in the Space Source kit. I think it's for the multi-melter. I then cut that multi-melter option off, back to there, and that just left me with the arm. I think I then took the, the ribbed cabling here from the multi-melter option and kept that to stick back on later on. And then these two last cans I think are from, they're in my Space Marines bits box. And I think they're options that come from the Storm Talon gunship kit for Space Marines. It's sort of a stubbier laser cannon version. Originally, I was going to use two laser cannons from uh, a Razorback, but I think they're significantly bigger. So I've gone for the smaller ones here, uh, and they were just a decent size. It came with like a, 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 a bar that runs underneath. So on the bottom one, I kept the bar, and on the other one, I cut it off, and then just made a small plastic little joiner in between just to separate these two. Uh, barrels just to make them line up straight uh, and then chop them up and line them up stuck them on like so and I think you could hardly tell that's been um, chopped and put together and then re-glued cleaned up and connected this cabling to there just to make it look more electrical looking you know laser technology just there so it's not strictly a hundred percent how twin laser cannons should look, but I don't think it's really noticeable. I think I'm quite happy with how that's come out. But you don't seem to get that option in the kit, so I've had to sort of customise it myself. And I didn't want to look, didn't want to look up a separate arm by you know to go into the hassle of searching for a, a dreadnought arm with a twin laser cannon. And it also means I've managed to keep the Space Wolves uh, design work here on the side as well because I've used the original uh, part of the uh, arm for the dreadnought there as well. So that goes on there. Happy enough. Uh, really happy how it's come out. And then I've actually started to use the Munitorum varnish from Games Workshop, and that's how he's come out. I, I rate it. I think it's superb. It's kept the gold with a bit of sheen to it, a bit like the old Purity Seal, uh, and then the paintwork there. It's not too glossy and shiny, so it's nicely balanced. This is superb spray. Actually, I'm very happy with it. So I was. I was wondering about you know they changed things around the old the old old purity seal was fine the new purity seal was not as good but now they've got this uh, Munitorum varnish fantastic stuff so it looks like I'm going to be sticking with that very very happy with the result and it's great for to be able to get a varnish from Games Workshop that really is good so very happy with how that varnish has come out so you, you can just see it here it hasn't killed off the metallics they're not all misty and murky it's kept them with a nice sheen but it hasn't made the whole model glossy, so very happy with the result from that varnish. And that's, um, just to say, when, when you varnish it, it comes out fast and in a, in a, a strong sort of a mist, 
and it almost looks like you're not covering the models. It's only short bursts, very light coat, uh, rotating the model around, and you think you've hardly covered it, but it has gone on and stuck on well. So don't over varnish. Uh, it's a mistake you can make. So it's just a very light dusting, but it still gives a good coverage. So there it is. I'll zoom out now. We'll take a look at the rules now for Beyond. Fantastic model. It's great that Games Workshop have now given you a plastic version. Really ornate and uh, superb looking. So we'll take a look now in the rules uh, for this unit. Because you know previously it was a lead model, a bit old, and if Games Workshop had have stuck with that, I probably wouldn't have gone for this unit. But because he's in plastic, and they've done such a good job, uh, and the rules are really good, then um, that swayed my decision. And it's it's fitting in nicely with this, the newer theme I've gone for the space hall. So I mean that's to to have. Uh, character Dreadnoughts as my central part of the army and the ones to dish out the heavier damage and then to have other units acting as a screen so Bjorn fits in absolutely perfect with that so here he is he is expensive you're going to be paying a lot of points to this guy so he's the unit to protect and use as wisely and as carefully as possible because if you lose him it's going to cost you over 200 points here, so Bjorn the Fell Handed, he is an HQ, uh, he's got less than 10 wounds, so he's going to be nicely hidden as a character, usually, um, so that's a superb asset to have at this Dreadnought, which is usually quite vulnerable because his character is going to be hidden, uh, can be hidden behind your other screen units. Bjorn the Fell Handed, uh, 180 points to start off with, and no points reductions there for chapter approved. He's uh, Movement 8, so he's quick enough as a Dreadnought here. He's uh, quicker than a Space Marine can, can walk for sure. 8 inch move is as fast as a Harlequin goes. Weapon skill 2 plus, ballistic skill 2 plus as well. So I, I want to make, that's why I've gone for the double laser cannon. I want to make use of his superb weapon skill, but also his superb ballistic skill also. Strength 7, and uh, he's toughest 8 for a Dreadnought. <laughs> he's pretty, pretty good. He's got 8 wounds. Five attacks, which is a superb baseline of attacks. Got leadership nine and a three plus save. He's armed with True Claw, which I believe costs nothing. It's in the cost yet, zero. Uh, and then, so you can go for a cheaper version of him if you want to go for a cheaper cheaper uh, option on the other arm. Uh, he's got a Heavy Flamer and a Salt Cannon. Now if you add those two up, uh, heavy Flamer, you're paying 14 points, and then uh, Assault Cannon, which is uh, 20, oh, 22 points, yeah, oh, it's expensive, so yeah, it's alright, but the, the Heavy Flamer, it's, you're going to get to use it, but Perhaps for a third of the battle, once you close the range, you get close. I just, I, on dreadnoughts, I don't think they're that great, yeah, and it just but it just bumps up the cost of your model. So I prefer it wasn't there, uh, but you have to save points and spend them somewhere else. But that's what he comes with. Um, you can only take one model per army. I'll cover the stats for the true claw and so on in just a moment. Beyond the fell handy, he replaces a salt cannon. So he still keeps the Heavy Flamer. He's always going to take this Heavy Flamer. Uh, he, he may replace his Assault Cannon with a Hellfrost Cannon. That was an option that I considered, and it comes in the kit. Uh, Hellfrost Cannon. It's more of a general all-round weapon. It's 25 points. Now just to compare, your Twin Alas Cannon. Let's drop now, it should be 40. Yeah, it's marked it here, so it's 40 points. So you're going to pay an extra 15 points for this Twin Laser Cannon. It's so the Hellfrost Cannon. It is here, yeah. So you can go for... Uh, if if models if model suffers any unsafe wounds from this weapon, but it's not slain, roll D6. On a 6, its target suffers a mortal wound. There's a slight chance it causes a little bit extra damage. You can go for a dispersed beam. Range 24, so the range isn't that great on this. Heavy D3, so you're gonna, on average you're going to get two shots. Strength 6, minus 2, and only one damage. I can just see it's not that great. And then focused beam. Range 24 again. Heavy 1, so you're going to get a shot. Strength 8, minus 4, and D6 damage. So it's okay. I just like the option of having two shots for the Twin Laser Cannon. Heavy 2, and you get Strength 9. 
so you know even land raider equivalents you're going to get threes to wound minus three and d6 damage i still think it's just that bit more potent for taking on heavier targets so um that's what i've gone between laser cannon there but then you can also go for the heavy plasma cannon uh heavy d3 it's range 36 a better range heavy d3 strength seven minus three one damage or you can supercharge uh any hit rolls of one it's one more to wound uh but you can have heavy d3 strength eight minus three and two damage a time so potential of between two and six damage a turn with that which isn't bad so you really want the, the punching potential but lacking on points through the heavy plasma cannon is the, uh, a pretty good option actually heavy plasma cannon is 30 points now down to 16 yeah that must be a typo <laughs> just have written that down wrong it could well be 16 but it's very very cheap so that's your cheaper option. That would keep Bjorn, well, that'll make him 210 points if you had the heavy flame in on top of that. So that's a cheaper option for sure. Definitely miles cheaper to take the uh, heavy plasma cannon. Wow. Okay, so uh, yeah, much cheaper. Interesting that one. You know, and two damage is, is solid enough. And potentially could cause just as much damage as a twin laser cannon. I know the potential is 12 if you roll double six for your damage, but on average you're going to be rolling six for your damage, so and it's, just a, it's not too much between the two. But anyway, I'm still going for the last cannon. Yeah, you've got your range 48, immediately you're able to target, uh, pick on targets all over the place. Um, the great thing is the character, so you can be chucking out these two last cannon shots every turn, very reliable, going to get the hits, likely to get the wounds, I'm just dishing out d6 wounds, uh, and just. Decent fire support, because my army does lack a bit of firepower. Didn't want to start investing in long-range firepower units and putting it all into the assault. But here is a, a close combat dreadnought here, a character that can be hidden, but can still chuck out two very reliable laser cannon shots each turn. So, yeah, we'll cover True Claw then. Uh, he's on plus five strength, so he'll fight at strength 12. And then it's going to be those five attacks hitting on twos. And as you'll see there, it's uh, re-rolling ones. So you're going to get those hits virtually all of them every time you attack which is superb it's AP minus four so you're going to cut right through armor your average vehicle three up three plus armor save is going to get no armor save at all and it's d6 damage and then to crown it all here you can re-roll your failed wound rolls as well so you're going to get those hits to you know two to hit re-rolling ones and then on average threes to wound re-rollable virtually all the wounds are going to come through and then once the wounds do come through you're going to strip off AP minus four fantastic weapon the true claw is superb Unless the opponent's got a decent invon save, which can mess things up. So then you also get stacks of decent stuff here. Ancient Tactician, if your armor's battle forged, you get an extra command point if you've got Bjorn, so you get a bonus command point as well. You've got smoke launchers. Then legendary ten legendary tenacity, roll a d6 each time he takes a wound. Five plus the wound is not lost. So that's one third of your wounds coming through, you're gonna ignore them. So you may as well call him add an 11 wound model really technically speaking yeah if you incorporate that into it it's got about 11 wounds and then explodes result just there but uh beyond's fantastic it really is good so i think we'll, we'll try and illustrate that not with the shooting so much we know what a less cannon can do but uh, we'll try and illustrate here the true claw just to see how good he is but um the tactics for him then is to uh, bury this unit behind my other screening units to keep him protected. So I'll have other units nearby and they act at the front of the army and then Bjorn follows up behind firing as he goes and then the opponent has to fire at the front screen before they can get through to the character. Basic tactic of 40k works really well and my Space Wars army is going to pivot on that to try and preserve and keep him alive. And he's got a use, he's not just lumbering around with a claw doing nothing. He's got decent firepower he can be using each turn. He's got movement 8, so he's going to be able to keep up well with the rest of the advancing infantry, or maybe 6 inches plus D6, he'll keep up with them pretty good, even without advancing. And then when it comes to the crunch, uh, he's got a superb close combat weapon to use as well. So we'll try and illustrate here think of something big 
to use. There you go. So we're going to try and charge into this monstrous heap. And there's danger here. We'll use the death roller rules, and, and we'll, there'll be some decent Overwatch here as well. But hopefully, we'll <laughs> we'll show you how good he can be. So uh, we'll go for uh, movement here. So look, an eight inch move is fast. There it goes, eight inches is quick. So in he goes, nice uh, and quick there. So one, one tactic you can use is charge another unit in to absorb the overwatch and then move your character in. Uh, Cause I've got no tech marines in my list. So I don't want to take wins if if it's avoidable. So charging another unit in of some kind, um, you know, even like a unit of these, which I've just painted up, you know, these expendable dogs. <laughs> <laughs> charge these in first uh, and then they can absorb the overwatch lose a few models they go in and then he's able to charge them without any harassment from overwatch so it just gives you an idea that's it that's the doggies just step so um we'll, we'll absorb the overwatch we'll say we've got some overwatch to take so i actually have nine big shooter shots in sixes and a bit of extra dacker which miss Five to wind, nothing. And uh, then the only other weapon he's got here is uh, the uh, kill cannon on top, which is D6 shots, two shots, then sixes, nothing. All right, survive this time. And then we go on a double one, which is still, because of his movement, we're still gonna put him into close combat. So here we go, watch this, five attacks, twos to hit, re-rolling ones, got the hits, uh, strength, uh, seven plus five, strength twelve, toughness eight, threes to win. Ah, they've all winded. Eight minus four bypasses the armor, and all of a sudden you've got five d6 damage. Which I wonder if that's going to do that actually. Yeah. Uh, just adding this up here, close. I think it's bang on sixteen here. Yeah, it is. Yeah, five, five is ten, sixteen. Exactly what needed. Just about. Then you've got Command Rear on standby. It's a pretty poor result, but 5d6 has actually done it. So. Ah, I don't know what to say. I just, <laughs> there's not much out there that will bring one of these down uh, very swiftly in one round of close combat. We'll try, we'll try them again. So in he goes. It's just the reliability of it. That's the, the great thing. Uh, so we'll do a bit of overwatch it. Sixes. Extra shots. Which hits. Five to end. No wounds. This is the big, big gun here. Kill cannon. Then sixes. Nothing. Nothing. So then he goes. Uh, ten this time. Five attacks. Triple one. God. Rerollable. Four make it through this time. So they struggle. Threes to end. Just the one. And look at that. Because that's that rerollability. Is very helpful. That's been a poor round. Okay, so it's only gonna be 2d6 damage. I come on, reroll that for sure. And then it's gonna be 10 damage. So he's fouled that time, it was a particularly poor round, but still uh, he's bitten a real chunk off of that vehicle. Fight back with the death roller hit. Two's for hits. Three's for wounds. Uh, five's for saves. Save one, four damage, and then Fives and sixes to ignore. Ignore two. Very, very useful. Two wounds taken. Six remain. So he's still in a healthy, a healthy state. And even if the orcs get to fight again next time around on their turn, uh, you should survive okay. Well, maybe go on to the next round here. We'll just finish off this. I don't want to leave this unresolved. So say the orcs get to fight now. Twos to hit. Uh oh. Threes to wound. <laughs> That's the wounds that have come through. I think there's actually trouble here. Fives to. Oh. Two saves, four damage, fives and sixes to ignore, ignore none. So uh, another lot of wounds coming through. But he's still alive on eight wounds, he's got two left. So again, twos, all hit, threes, re-rollable, all wounded, 5d6 damage, and all of a sudden, that's 12, 16. So he's killed a, a like equivalent of a fresh one of those. So I hope that's given you an illustration there of the damage potential this guy has. It can be terrifying. Another great option is for taking on multiple wound 
heavy infantry. We'll charge in here and try and illustrate this for you. So uh, custom custom shooters, we'll let them fire a bit of overwatch first of all. So your sixes. That's it. Five swords. Nothing. We'll charge in. Like so. Okay, so. Five attacks. Twos to hit. Rerollable. They've all hit. Uh, well, this is going to be twos to end. Rerollable. Absolutely superb. Eight minus four. So two up save becomes a six up save. So six is to try and block. Has blocked one. First damage is a six. That's going to be a uh, complete kill. Next one is a two. Uh, you can command reroll that. We'll say it just rolls over onto the next guy, in which case it will take absorb the next one. So he's gone. And then the last one is a one. Again, command rerollable -roll, re potential there. I'll say I'll do command reroll that. And get a four. Imagine I would in that situation. That just leaves one to fight. Uh, but the potential is there just to, to wipe out the entire unit. Again, if there's not much of an invon save, his weapon is even more uh, effective, just letting more and more wounds come through. You can imagine how uh, good he would be against characters, and again, if they have a, a, a poor invon save or no invon save at all, the ability to chuck out tons of wounds um, is terrifying. Tyranny monstrous creatures, big trouble against this guy. We'd wade his way through after uh, one card effects or trigon after the next no problem at all so that gives you an idea i think of the close combat potential of him when he needs to because you can hide him behind your screen and just ha have him as a mobile gun platform granting rear all one star units nearby and just as the timing's right then you can unleash him and he's got a superb close combat ability potential as well exciting unit i think to add into this new space wolves list for sure but anyway, that's Beyond the Fell Handed. As I said at the start, amazing model. Superb option to take from the, the Dreadnought uh, option there for the Space Wolves. Uh, really happy with how he's been painted up. So uh, if you want to keep up to date with my uh, projects as I paint them, then check out Instagram. Follow uh, Striker Scorpion 82 on Instagram. And uh, that will give you all the updates. I take pictures of, of battle reports as we go along so you get some exclusive photographs. And then whatever comes freshly off the painting desk, if you want to see what's, you know, on its way to the channel, uh, then I take uh, nice pictures of different models as I go along just to show you what's freshly painted up. It gives you a chance to see the model zoom in and, and so on, to see the progress of the different factions. And it's also a great way to keep uh, updated with new video releases, the main videos that come out on both the Plus channel and on the regular channel here on YouTube. Uh, I post those onto Instagram as well, so uh, it's a very useful platform indeed. So the next step for the Space Wolves, keep a look out for the entire army uh, overview and tactical. I'll, I'll combine all the units together, we'll run through all of the lists and the points and the tactics and you'll see the whole army and that means they're ready for war, fully updated and then you can keep a look out for uh, battle reports for the Space Wolves on both the channels. Uh, there is a new one on the Plus channel featuring the new units including him, he gets to fight and it is against the Orcs and, and, and then in the future more games we hope with the Space Wolves against a whole variety of different armies. And we hopefully look forward to the day when we can do Thousand Suns versus Space Wolves. And I think we'll have to do a double episode of that, I reckon. So plenty uh, to be excited about for the Space Wolves in the future. And uh, hopefully a, a painted tutorial or, or two for them uh, in the future as well. But there it is. That's uh, Tactics of Showcase here for Beyond the Foul Handed. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.